How's it going everyone? Cody Bernardi here with a <clears throat> another YouTube video and in today's video we are going to be doing something that <clears throat> <coughs> Okay, now that we got that out of the way. How's it going everyone? Cody Bernardi here with a another YouTube video and in today's video we are going to be talking about ways you can make money in open source intelligence. Now I talk about OSINT a lot. Um, there's obviously many different kinds of ints out there. There's geoint, social media intel. I mean, there's just so many I I I'm, I'm I could talk about, but in, in the, I guess in this video we're going to be talking about OSINT only. This comes up a lot because like I do make OSINT videos, but people are like, okay, well, I mean, I got all of this information, but uh, I want to pay the bills doing this, and I I kind of put a, together a, a list of things you can do. Uh, career-wise and as a gig, uh, ways to make money using OSINT. So I have it broken down to two sections. So normal career, so this is like your full-time job, and then uh, ways you can actually make money doing this. So you have uh, the normal jobs. Uh, so you could be a skip tracer or a debt collector, basically finding people that owe money. You know, they're in forbearance on a loan, and you need to do some investigative work, finding their Facebook, finding associates and all that. Um, next up you have just the normal plain old vanilla PI private investigator. So that's going to be, uh, obviously you're going to need a license to do that. And that's going to be more, uh, well you could do online work doing that. I'm not a PI, so I can't really speak to the job, but that's also going to require you to be finding people in person and getting f photos and videos and stuff like that. But, um, that, that one's kind of like a known thing that you could do. Uh, third one that I have on here is actually recruiting, um, which isn't really anything. I, I can't think of anyone that works like as a recruiter and says they have OSINT sk skills, uh, but it definitely uh, would help to have that. Um, so if you're trying to fill like a, a new security team uh, using LinkedIn skills and Twitter skills and Facebook skills, <clears throat> searching skills specifically um, to find those people to fill those roles, uh, would definitely help. Um, so recruiters, they might not know it, but they definitely do have some level of OSINT skill. Now, obviously they probably use a lot of programs that I'm not familiar with, but having that I just skill set of knowing how to use these social media sites to find what you need. Um, next up, we have real estate. Now this one will fall into the gig site as well, um, which I'll actually take that out of the uh, normal career path because that's gonna be a side gig actually. Uh, next one is business investigations. So I've actually done this personally myself. So uh, doing investigative work on a competitor, um, finding out their C-level stuff, uh, finding emails, data dumps, things like that. Things that, you know, businesses would want to know to have a competitive edge against their competitors. Um, next up is cyber threat intelligence. So I kind of did this a little bit when I worked at Amazon. Um, I was on the vuln management team, but I was proactively seeking for things like leaked passwords or, you know, things of that nature that are online that probably shouldn't be online or people talking about acquisitions that aren't public yet. Um, and that was basically me finding that stuff and working with the legal team and PR team uh, and doing all sorts of cool stuff with that. Not saying I did any of that or anything came out of it, but that's kind of the process. Um, and then also cyber threat and tell and the fact that uh, you're proactively finding threats. So people that are actually could possibly do damage to the business um, or cause any disruptions, anything like that. A common tool for that is like recorded feature. Uh, next up is journalism. Uh, so, I mean, this is Bellingcat pretty much. Uh, they're journalists um, and they they take down events. So so example would be like the DC terrorist attack a couple weeks ago. Um, they're piecing everything together. I mean, it's not public yet because, well, it's just a lot of shit happened that day and they're going to have a very comprehensive investigative report on it. I can only assume given their history of putting out phenomenal OSINT reports. Uh, next up again, another obvious one is law enforcement. Um, so FBI, local police, sheriff, all of that stuff. They do investigative work, uh, in person, but they're going to have to be doing online work as well. So cyber crimes, um, human trafficking, all that stuff. You'll typically find that stuff online. <clears throat> and the last one, I actually don't know too much about. Uh, I did pull all most of these from the OSINT Curious blog, uh, which is anti-money laundering, which I personally, I, I know what that is, obviously, but I don't know what the day-to-day -day 
of that is like. Like, I, I, I'm not even going to pretend I know. So there's that, the anti-money laundering part. Now, this one right here, <clears throat> things you can make on the side. So this no, won't necessarily be your full-time job. And these are some things that I just thought of that I'm like, huh, I'm going to try this out and see what happens. So the first one is selling sock puppets. I don't know if that is a business out there, but holy <laughs> shit. Uh, if you're able to build sock puppets and build credibility in them and cook them over a few years, um, uh, yeah, I'm sure you can make some decent money, especially if you get them infiltrated into certain groups. Like, let's say, example, if Parler was still a thing, um, that might age bad, I don't know, but uh, right now Parler really doesn't exist. Uh, let's say, hypothetically, you built a very well, you know, well-built-out sock puppet with, you know, 100,000 followers on it and you're interacting with people, and well, it's a sock puppet, you could sell that sock puppet. Uh, so maybe in this video, we'll talk about how to make a good sock puppet. Again, it's not a full-time job, and you can honestly, I'm not telling you to not pay taxes, like pay your taxes, of course, but uh, there's ways you can get around that transaction um, that, you know, just pay your taxes, you know. Uh, next up, we have real estate OSINT, so I kind of mentioned that in the beginning. Um, I, the, the, the way I mentioned this is this would be for high profile people purchasing like really expensive homes. Like if you're dealing with like 200 and $300,000 homes, more than likely the buyer is not going to give a shit who the previous owner was. Uh, but when you're talking about millions of dollars in homes, uh, it might be something that a buyer m might not think of, uh, but doing some investigative work on the previous tenants, like for example, I wouldn't necessarily want to buy Jake Paul's house, but I mean, obviously he's a high profile person, but let's say someone that acts the way he does and just completely trashes his house. Uh, yeah. Having that, you know, investigative work done, you know, charge a couple thousand bucks. Like, Hey, these guys blow up couches in their backyard or whatever the f they do. Like, yeah, that's a good investment. If you're spending that kind of money, you know, the OSINT on the previous tenants and then just generic OSINT that a realtor should be doing, but I can imagine that they would just hand that off to you. Um, so gathering public data on the property. So like what crimes have been done on the property, if there's any, or in the neighborhood or uh, any tax data, Do does the Department of Justice have a lien on the property? Like all that stuff will probably be done when you're purchasing a home, but you know, that's something you could do. That's OSINT. Um, next up bug bounty. So I made a whole video on corporate recon. Um, I actually gave a talk on that. Uh, I'll put a link to it up here or up here. One of, one of the sides. Cause yeah, a lot of the, a lot of bug bounty hunting is going to be OSINT and going to be recon and Intel gathering, um, enumeration and stuff like that. Uh, next up is a different kind of bounty, uh, FBI most wanted bounties or local government sheriff bounties and stuff like that. Um, if you're able to in the weeds of building relationships and or relationships, as far as like building associations with criminals and stuff like that. And if you have a really good sock puppet, who knows, you might be able to get some cash by uh, being a rat, <laughs> for lack of better terms. Um, and then the last one is again, something that I've done personally is business intelligence. And I didn't do that full time. Um, I have my own business, Blackburn security, which if you need business intelligence, I was done link down below. Uh, but basically what that was is gathering intel on competitor businesses and then also doing counterfeit or anti anti counterfeit um, investigations. So like a giant company needed me to find, I'm not going to say who obviously NDAs, but um, like who the hell is selling all this stuff on Alibaba? Like they have our logo all over the stuff and that's not our stuff. But anyways, those are just a giant list. Um, I'll be getting on my computer now and just kind of show you um, kind of the things that you could do on the side, because I can't really show you how to get a job as a PI, but I'll get into maybe selling sock puppets. I don't know. Maybe, maybe you can make a website for that or maybe dot onion. Who knows? Um, and then real estate OSINT. So we'll be talking about real estate in this video. Um, and then FBI most wanted. That one's gonna be a little tricky because it's gonna be a lot of people outside of the country. So we'll look into maybe some most wanted people. Who knows? Uh, but anyways, I want to get all that in the front. And if you're still interested, uh, still interested, uh, you know, keep watching. Okay, so let's talk about building a sock puppet. Um, now, like I said, this is the whole purpose of this is to build it over time. 
um, make credit or create some sort of credibility with it. Um, and the whole thing of this is to sell it. Now, there's a couple things you need to take into account before you build a sock puppet, especially if you're going to be selling it. Uh, number one, you want to know the audience you're going to be dealing with. Um, so in this case, I'm going to be on gab.com. Uh, I'm not, I, I'm not going to explain who the audience is, where the target audience is. You can just read what's on my screen right now. Um, and you'll know. So you want to kind of get yourself involved with the community. Uh, so you'll sign up. Obviously I prefer to use burner email addresses, which I actually have well, actually actually right here. We email addresses that forward everything to my main email address. So if there is a breach or anything like that, my main email address is not associated with this account. All right, I guess we got Travis and Pastrana outside. So let's go ahead and create an account. Um, we're gonna head and sign up real quick. Now this is where things get a little tricky. Now to build a sock puppet that blends in, you wanna make like a username that blends in with the crowd. If you go on Twitter and you were to look up the specific crowd that goes to Gab, they have a very similar looking username. It's gonna be something with a bunch of numbers at the end of it. You want to blend in or you want something that uses terms that are similar to what the people that you're targeting are gonna be using. In this case, it's gonna be Patriot. It's gonna be Rebe Rebel. It's gonna be things of that nature. Oh, like this is what I'm talking about. It's just like what, what happened? Why that? How is that created? So we'll go ahead and use this guy's user account. Go here. Okay. So we'll just use that. We'll use a burner account. Gab is home to free speech. Okay. Let's get going. Okay. So display name. We're going to do this. Easy. This one account right here got us everything we need. Okay. So we got that one. And then we're just going to do, I think their name is just G but let's find something else that could be more appealing than just G. The one and knowing could do that. CT mama could do that. Okay, so we'll just do Frank Castle Anon. Again, with the username, that's what I'm saying. You wanna make, you wanna be very observant with the crowd that you're blending yourself into. If you're gonna be joining uh, a Caucasian walking mom group, you're not gonna put a name like Frankford Smith. I don't know. It's a mom walking group. You're not gonna put Frankford Smith, whatever the f that is. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna do this. So find your people. Oh, cool. So we can kind of put ourselves into these various groups. So we can join Practical Christian Perspective. Okay, so what is on your mind? And you wanna blend in, of course, not my president. Resist. No, I don't want those. Okay. Finish. Now, another thing to keep in mind is if you're going to be, be building these sock puppets, a good thing to keep in mind, obviously you want to bake these um, over time. Basically what that means is let's say you build a sock puppet and you're trying to make it look authentic. Facebook was made in about 2004. Well, it was invented in 2004. People have since created Facebooks in, I'd say around 2009, where it really started taking popularity by most people. Um, obviously, there's nothing sus eh, if you have a Facebook account that's created on January 20, 2021. Might look a little weird, especially if you start interacting right away, because that raises all sorts of red flags. Um, so what you want to do, especially with like those accounts on Facebook, on Twitter and stuff, it tells you when you joined. What you want to do is you want to treat it like your own account. You want to, well, your own account in the way that you develop this persona. So if you're going to be a right-wing terrorist, well, you want to start acting like a right-wing terrorist on that account. Okay, going to pause the video. Uh, don't take my advice. Don't, don't, don't do that, please. Like, don't be a terrorist. That's all I ask. Thank you. On with the video. For a few years before you even consider posting the thing up for sale, you want to build a relationship with people. You want to be involved in, in groups. And this whole time, people don't know that you're just a person looking to sell the account. 
think, put your own personal opinions aside. You want to put your own personal everything aside and you're this new person. Uh, now for the case of Gab, uh, I don't really have to worry about that too much because it's not going to look super sus that I created this account in January of 2021 because that's when Gab really took off. Parler was taken offline about a week or so ago and everyone moved from Parler to Gab. So I'm at a prime time right now with this account. Obviously I can build it. Like I already got someone interacting with it. So there we go. I mean, I'm already getting interactions with people. I'm not having even began to do anything. Anyways, that is it for this video. If y'all enjoy content like this, please hit the thumbs up button. Hit the subscribe button with the bell notification because, well, like I mentioned, the, the whole DC terrorism thing um, is not going to go anything past maybe part two. I might make a part two on it, but yeah, I don't want to go and start doing that stuff publicly and uh, get my house blown up by uh, some, uh, well, uh, you know, people. Cause that, that's not fun. I, you know, I'm, I'm shopping for a house right now. And one of the things that's probably not covered in my home insurance policy is a terrorist attack. So I prefer not that, I prefer that not to happen, um, at my home. So anyways, that's it for this video. You'll take care. Goodbye.